Good afternoon, guys. I hope you guys are well. I have this word, and I have a good amount of words for you guys. So I'm going to try to get them out today the best that I can. Um, I've been just taking a little bit of a break. Um, revelations have been crazy. When I mean revelations have been crazy, crazy. I remember I put a video in the past, um, and I told you guys that the second half of 2024 people are going to be shocked because what was actually illusions will be revealed as an illusion as in what's done in the dark is going to come to light and i told you guys that in this in that video in revelations it talks about in the last days good will be called bad and bad will be called good and the only way for their for people to know the full truth is revelations have to be revealed. And revelations are revealed through God. And revelations are also revealed through God and God's people who God uses to send the messages out to people. You have to understand that throughout the centuries, throughout the decades, throughout the years, you know... The word, who God truly is, a lot of that has been tampered with. You have to understand that throughout the years, people have become distracted, hypnotized, and people have become trapped into more religion than relationship with God to the point where they're unable to see what is real from what is not. And this has robbed people of their free their free will, but it has also robbed people of happiness through Christ, freedom through Christ. It has robbed people from the royalties the birthright that God has for them. Because you have to understand something. Just like God will place his people in specific areas, the enemy will do the same thing. The enemy knows how important the church is to God. The church is the bride of Christ. The enemy knows that church is important to God. This is why the church is the enemy's first choice as to where he's placing his decoys. Because if you can put a witch in a church or a warlock in a church, people are not going to suspect that they're a witch and they're a warlock. And because people have already fallen to the illusion to where they no longer have discernment the way they should, they're not going to be able to discern who's a witch in a, ch in a church or a warlock in a church. So these decoys are put here in order to rob children of God who go to the church for help because the church is used as a hospital. The enemy puts these decoys in these positions to rob children of God who are actually going through attacks, warfare, who really need help. The enemy, put, the enemy puts decoys in the church to rob these people who come to the church for help, to rob them of their birthright, to rob them of their freedom through Christ, to rob them of their happiness to place restrictions on them. And because there's not a lot of people out here who are speaking up about spiritual warfare or a lot of people have been afraid to speak up, because if you guys notice now, there's a lot more people coming out now and talking about the witchcraft being done in the churches, the witchcraft being done in general. A lot of people are coming out now and talking about this. The curses and the manipulation and the witchcraft manipulation and the warfare. And I got to tell you guys all the time, witchcraft afflictions and witchcraft manipulations are not the same. Witchcraft manipulation is far more dangerous than witchcraft affliction. Because witchcraft affliction is your spirit being afflicted, but it can't kill you. Similar to how Job's spirit was afflicted to where it affected his physical body, 
but it couldn't kill him. Witchcraft manipulation is when another person's free will is being manipulated into doing evil or your free will is manipulated into doing something to others or yourself, right? Similar to how Job started having thoughts of suicide, but he never committed suicide. Why? Because Job, Job is a very upright man. Job is very faithful to God. So even when Job was in distress and Job was being afflicted, even though the witchcraft manipulation of suicidal thoughts was in his head to where he asked God to take him out, he did not one time say, I'm going to do it to myself. Why? Because he was upright. This is why it's so important to be upright through Christ because any attempt, any manipulation that comes your way, you are going to be strong enough to overcome it because you are already upright. A person that is not upright will be weak in the spirit, which means these manipulations will more like take over their body and their mind. Hence why an evil person that has an evil heart that is not upright, it is easy for the devil to manipulate them and use them through the witchcraft manipulation in order to get them to do evil because they're already not upright in the heart. So... With all that being said, this is the same tactic that is used in the churches. A lot of evil people are in the churches. They are easily manipulated through witchcraft manipulation by the decoys in the churches who are, who are top high-ranking warlocks and witches. They are easily manipulated by them because their heart's not already upright. So they, they end up doing evil, does evil things as well in the church. And they end up being manipulated, hypnotized to the point where... When a true child of God walks into the church who is upright, who is spiritually gifted, who does understand these things, they are shunned. Why are they shunned from the church? They are shunned from the church because the decoys in the church that the enemy puts there, they know that if that child of God becomes more advanced in their gift, as in they upgrade in their gifts and they're able to see more, they're going to eventually see, they're they're going to see who they truly are. Their cover is going to be blown. Right. So what they will try to do, they'll try to get rid of a child of God out of the church. They'll try to get the child of God out of the church as quickly as possible once they find that the child of God is gifted. If they're too advanced in their gifts, as in they know they're hearing from God, they know they're seeing in the spirit, they will get kicked out of the church. Or there's going to be a manipulative witchcraft tactic, which is to gang up on that child of God, make that child of God think they're crazy and if a bunch of pe- if if that uh, one of the ringleaders in a church who is a decoy of the enemy convinces people, manipulates people to join him to gang up on these children of God who are actually spiritually gifted and can hear the Holy Spirit and see what's going down, then that child of God may not be discerned enough to be like, man, this is a tactic. They may actually fall for the trap of thinking they are crazy, feeling left out, feeling like they don't belong, and then they leave the church. Remember something. I know a lot of Christians will sit there and tell you that you don't need church to get to know God. That you don't have to go to church to get to know God. I totally get it. And you know what? It's the truth because you get to know God on your own, your own personal relationship. That's the whole point of having your own personal walk with God is you get to know him on your own. You build your relationship with him on your own. However, church is important to God. Fellowship is important to God. Church is supposed to be a place where people go to to receive fellowship and help and support. No different from a hospital. No different from going to school and learning and being taught. No different from everywhere else where you go and you get you get education, right? And you're taught. But let me tell you something. People are staying away from the church because of the evilness that is within the church. And we get it. But we have to understand something. That is what the enemy wants. The enemy wants to take over the church to where we don't go to church, where we don't we don't end up stepping foot in a church. Now, it doesn't mean you have to go to church every single day and, and make it a, a specific ritual. No, I go to church when God tells me to go to church. If he says go to church in person tomorrow, I'm going in person tomorrow. I go and God tells me to go. But when people sit there and say, oh, I don't go to church because of this. I don't go to church because of that. I haven't stepped foot in a church for years. You have to understand that that is what the enemy wants. The enemy is trying to take over what is important to God. And if we sit there and say, okay, we're not going to go to church because of this, because of that. They're evil, this, this, this. We're giving the enemy what he wants. We got to fight back for what is ours, what is, right, what is rightfully ours. The church does not belong to witches and warlocks. It belongs to children of God. It belongs to God's people. That's where the church belongs to. And it belongs to people who need help. It belongs to people who want to be saved. That's who it belongs to. The enemy has been playing this sick tactic for a very long time. 
the enemy knows church is important to God, the enemy's going to try to keep as much of God's people away from church as possible. So I don't want you to always, you know, when you see people say, oh, I don't go to church, I don't have to go to church, da, 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 da. A lot of these people that are saying that, I used to say this myself, they're saying it out of pride. They're saying it because they're scorned and they had a bad experience and they had church hurt. But don't let church hurt make you shun, shun away from the church or shun the church because church is important to God. I don't care what other Christians are saying. I can hear from the Holy Spirit. He says church is important to him. There's a reason why the enemy has his people in the pulpit. Because the plan is to keep us away from the pulpit. You get what I'm saying? So when you hear people say, oh, you don't have to go to church. Don't go to church. Don't this, don't that. You don't have to. You have free will. But church is important to God. If you are truly walking with God and you are truly his servant and you are truly hearing from him, he is going to tell you, yes, you need to go here and there. It doesn't have to be all the time, but he's going to want you to go here and there because leadership is important. You have to understand that he wants, he wants us to be able to help people. The church is supposed to be a hospital. It's supposed to be a place where people go to receive help. Look how much people go through warfare on a daily basis and are being attacked. And they can't even walk into a church to get help. They walk into a church, they're being restrained from seeing a pastor, from seeing a prophet because they need help. Or they're being kicked out because they're being called demon. Or they're being demonized. Or they're, they're being told they're crazy. Or they're being gaslit because their anointing is powerful and the false pastor that's in there, the false apostle that's in there is seeing that as a threat. Or the warlock in which that's in there is seeing that as a threat. So they're gaslighting these people to get them away from the church to hurt them so they have church hurt so they don't go back. So they don't want to walk in their calling. I just want to say something and here's what I'm going to say. God said in the last days, good's going to be called evil. Evil's going to be called good. Right? But I want to also mention something. God also said in the last days, he's going to pour his spirit on all people. But even though he's pouring his spirit on all people, there's going to be a few out of these people who are going to be walking the same testimony, similar or the same to a David, to a Esther, to a Joseph, to a Nehemiah, to a Job, which means that your story may not be exactly the same, but you're going to go through similar afflictions, similar obstacles. Why is that? Because you're calling the purpose, the plan he has for you, your role in the kingdom is similar to the role of these individuals, which means you are a chosen leader, a chosen child of God who is a leader, who is going to have responsibility. And the responsibility is going to, it's going to require strength, but it's also going to require braveness. You're going to have to be brave. You're going to have to be brave because you're going to have people who are hypnotized, who are deep into these illusions that are going to be used from these occult leaders in the churches, from these witches and warlocks, they're going to be used as pawns to try to tear you down. To do the, they're going to be used to do the dirty work, to try to get rid of you. And they're already starting. They're already starting. They're already starting. This is the season where God is going to have many of us speak up. And we're going to start calling things out. And I'm not just talking about myself. I'm talking about many of y'all that are watching. And many of y'all that have YouTube channels who are actually hearing from God. I'm not talking about the fake ones. I'm talking about the, those who are actually hearing from God. Who've been running from their calling. Who've been seeing things go down. And they're like, man, God, I don't know how to put out this word. I don't know how I'm going to do this. It's going to get deep. Some of you guys, you're building back that wall like, like Nehemiah. You're building back that wall. You have to remember, that wall that was, tear, that was tore down, like in the book of Nehemiah, that's, what was, that's what's been happening to many of God's people. 
that's what's been happening. So when you start building back that wall like Nehemiah, best believe you're going to have many people trying to block you from building that wall. All these enemies are going to come out of nowhere trying to block you from building the wall. Because you have to remember something, you're not just building the wall for you. You're not just building the wall for you. Your calling is going to save so many people. You, while operating through your calling and your braveness, that is going to help someone else walk in their calling, which is going to help someone else walk in their calling, which is going to help someone else walk in their calling. You're building back that wall and you're going to get help from those who God is going to use. That's why I said, even if God pours his spirit on all people, there's going to be a few who are chosen to be in leadership that are going to have high responsibility similar to Nehemiah, similar to Esther, similar to Joseph, similar to Daniel, similar to David. But you're also going to have people who may not even be on the walk with you, who are upright in the heart, who God has still poured his spirit on, even though they are not chosen or called. He poured his spirit on them who are going to be destiny helpers coming in and assisting you. An example of this is Let's just say that you need help with something and you meet someone who can help you, but the person is not from your faith, like not from your belief, but they have faith. They have a big heart. They're upright, but they're not from your belief. They believe something totally different. They believe in God. Then let's just say they're Muslim. Let's just say they're Muslim. They believe in God, but they're upright. They, They have a good spirit. God may use them to actually assist you in what you need help in. God may pour his spirit on them in a specific moment to where they can help you. You see what I'm saying? You, some of you guys are going to be breaking chains, not off of just yourself, but the chains that you're breaking off of your bloodline, the chains that you're breaking off of yourself, that has already been broken, by the way. These chains are, you are also going to be helping break the chains of other people, the strongholds, the delusions that people have been taught for years, for centuries that have kept them. That has kept them in the open without that wall. Y'all are going to be building back that wall. Similar to Esther. Some of you guys are setting people free. You are going to be used to set people free when the truth comes out. And this is why they've been trying to tear many of you guys down. Because of this. This is why they're consistently doing witchcraft. Because of this. This is why they envy you because of this. In this season, you're going to bravery is going to be very important to God when it comes to you. Faith is going to be very important as well. So you're going to have to have faith and you're going to have to be brave. And when God tells you to do something, listen to him and be obedient. Because you have to remember it's not just your life that you're you're saving, but you're saving your children. You're saving the next generation. You're saving people you don't even know. You are someone's destiny helper. You see what I'm saying? You are a group of people's destiny helper. You may be a destiny helper of a mass of people. And you may not even be aware of it. Similar to how Esther was a destiny helper for her people. She had no idea she was going to end up freeing the Jews when she married the king, but she did. She did. I keep telling people her purpose was not just to sit around and look pretty. Her purpose wasn't to sit around and look pretty. Her purpose was bigger than that. And that's what some of you guys, you guys are going to have a purpose that is going to free a lot of people. And this is why they've been trying to stop you. This is the year. Many of you guys, things are going to come to the surface. The truth's going to come out. And God is really separating his real from the evil. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.